So the yeas are 230, the nays are 197, present is one. Article one is adopted. The question, the question is on adoption of Article 2. The question is on the adoption of Article 2. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. No. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York see the president? For what purpose I does ask the for gentleman? Madam Speaker, I ask for, for a roll. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? I ask for a roll call vote. A recorded vote is requested. Those favoring a recorded vote will still rise. That will be in order. A sufficient number have arisen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. All right, so now uh, they're getting ready to uh, vote on Article 2, uh, the uh, Article 2 uh, obstruction of Congress uh, resolution, this uh, two articles of impeachment. The first one, abuse of power, Jake. The President of the United States has been impeached on that. Now they're voting on obstruction of Congress. Uh, I anticipate that there will be a similar vote, although there could be some differences, some uh, some Democrats might vote for Article 1, but not necessarily for Article 2. Yeah, I suspect all the Republicans will oppose. It, it will be a very similar vote. We know that uh, a Democratic congressman from Maine who won a Trump district, a Congressman Golden, uh, has said he's going to vote against Article 2. This is the, this is the one obstruction of Congress, the idea uh, that the Trump administration, the Trump White House, did not share any documents and also blocked witnesses from testifying uh, before uh, Congress, uh, which is true. But the counter argument has been then, you, then you're supposed to go to court and, and have the judicial system uh, figure out the remedy. The Democrats have said that would take too much time and would result in, in, uh, in, in nothing more than what's going on right now. They want to get, get this done. Uh, so, but we do expect a, a very, very similar uh, outcome, maybe one or two votes fewer in favor. But let's just take one, one moment just to acknowledge the fact that, that President Trump has now just been formally impeached by the House right. of Representatives right. for abuse of Congress. The gavel has come down when we, we noted when uh, they reached 216 votes uh, that they'd reached the threshold. Uh, but we now have uh, this incredibly uh, grave moment where the House of Representatives is saying to the world, and yes, it was a partisan vote, but guess what? Democrats control the House and that's how it is. Just like Republicans are control the Senate, they're going to have to get to have their say. And this is a very grave moment where the House of Representatives is saying, President Trump needs to be removed from office. He's, uh, he, he was uh, impeached for abuse of power, as we just saw. Now they're voting on obstruction of Congress. Uh, Anderson, back to you. And we'll be watching that. It's at 187 right now. 216 is the, uh, the threshold that, uh, that the, uh, the vote needs to get to on the yeas. Uh, Tim, I'm, I'm going to continue with you in just a second, Jeff Tubin. Just in terms of the article that they are now voting on, Article 2, Obstruction of Congress, you believe that what has taken place is obstruction of Congress, and it, it, it's unprecedented. I, I do. I mean, every president has had a dispute with Congress over producing some witnesses, over producing some documents, but no president in history has ever said, I will not cooperate at all. Um, that's what this uh, article is about. That's what happened in this, in in this impeachment investigation. And this vote is the result. Uh, 194 now is the uh, the yeas uh, needing to reach 216. Uh, Tim, the founders that? were really nervous about putting too much power in, in the hands of one person. There was no elected commander in chief or head of state or head of government in the world in 1787. The United States would produce the first, and so they decided that they would also give Congress power to remove that president, lest or if that president should ever misuse power, commit a crime. And in our history, 44 individuals have been president. We have 45, right, 45th president, but it's 44 because of Grover Cleveland. Only three of them, now Tay, their third, have been impeached. Only three out of 44 in 230 years. The founders didn't want us to do it all the time, and let's hope it's not normalized, but the founders did want it to happen when the constitutional order needed to be rebalanced. 
lest the president misuse his power. This has been decided today. It's a very important moment for the country. It's a very solemn moment, but it's a reminder of how our system was supposed to work. You put a lot of power in the hands of one person, there has to be a counterbalancing available if that person misuses it. Today, the House said he had misused it. So, hold on, here's the second gavel. 129, the nays are 198, present is one, Article 2 is adopted. And she just did it again. Yeah. Somebody else somebody yeah. else cheered again. It looked like sounded like one person and Pelosi putting right. up the hand again. She has had uh, the, most of the Democrats, and you have to give her credit, most of the Democrats have been in line. They have been solemn. They have been serious. Uh, they have not rejoiced. They've treated this day with the gravity Without it objection, deserves. Without objection, the motion to reconsider Article 1 is laid on the table. Without objection, the motion to reconsider Article 2 is laid on the table. Pursuant to Section 7B of House Resolution 758, the House stands adjourned till 9 a.m. tomorrow. But just to continue my point, uh, but there have been a handful of members. Uh, Congressman Al Green of Texas, who introduced, uh, along with Congressman Brad Sherman, articles of impeachment in the summer of 2017. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, after her inauguration, saying she was going to impeach the MFR at a, at a celebration uh, behind uh, closed doors, as it were. Uh, and those few incidents, few incidents, and the House of Representatives, Democrats have voted against impeaching President Trump three times before today. Those few incidents have been used to paint the entire Democratic Party, who for the most part has followed the Speaker's lead uh, as, as all of them being impeachment crazy. And you saw her trying to, to fend that off again this evening she, twice. She has been throughout all of this, and John and I were talking about this before, she has been pitch perfect almost pitch perfect, I would say. And she understands the solemnity of the moment. And this is her flock, these, oh. these Democrats. And some of them are young, and some of them are incredibly partisan. And she warned them, no applause. This is not a time for applause. And that look could kill. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I, 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 Hold on one more. I just want to go to Dana. Uh, she's up uh, on Capitol Hill and done a lot of reporting over the years on the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Your thoughts? Well, it was the look, but it was also the flick. And that's the word that I'm hearing from people who are on the floor, including people, people who uh, work for, for the speaker. Uh, the flick of the hand, along with the look, said it all and really did kind of, it was kind of a capstone moment of how she tried to take her entire caucus through this process that she didn't want to be leading them through. When she walked by here, I don't know, wow, now 12 hours ago uh, onto the, to the House floor, I asked, how are you feeling? And she said, sad. That was the tone that she was trying to set. That was uh, the atmosphere that she wanted around uh, this, this, this process that she reluctantly uh, allowed and, and guided the Democrats through. And so that is why that moment is so significant, because it really encapsulates uh, the kind of leader that she is, and as you and Jake were saying, uh, the kind of, of raucous uh, caucus <laughs> that she has, particularly the, the progressive side who have been pushing, 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 and doing so in a way that she understands in her core is not that beneficial politically. Yeah, very important points indeed. And John, you wanted to weigh in as well. It's, it's the same point, and we're going to see this in the Senate as well. Yes, Nancy Pelosi would like to see a Democrat elected in the presidential election year next year. Yes, Mitch McConnell says he's working hand in glove with the Trump White House. Nancy Pelosi, everything she has done in this process is to protect her majority first and foremost. Everything Mitch McConnell is doing in the Senate is to protect his majority first and foremost, which is why he's saying, Mr. President, you're not getting your witnesses. In Nancy Pelosi's case, she didn't want those cheers, and she didn't want, remember, Republicans wanted to have the vote by, you have to say your name, mm -hmm. Republicans wanted to have a full roll call vote, the old-fashioned way, where they would say, Congresswoman Slotkin, and she would have to say, I. It's against House rules for a, a member to use the floor in a campaign ad, but we have seen the floor show up in super PAC ads. Nancy Pelosi did not want the, her members to have to, on camera, say I, because the vulnerable ones, it would be used against them in an ad, and she does not want cheering on the floor, because liberals from very safe districts can all get up and cheer, but some Republican super PAC will use it in an ad against the vulnerable Democrats, saying not only did they impeach the president, they cheered. She did not want that. She is all about protecting 
her. Yeah, and she didn't want to play into that. She has been hands. very much, I think, in some ways behind the scenes. If you think about uh, Newt Gingrich, right, and that impeachment of uh, Bill Clinton, it was very much sort of Newt Gingrich versus uh, Donald Trump. Here, she was wielding her power uh, behind the scenes, thinking about those 30 uh, Democrats in vulnerable districts uh, going to have a tough uh, time getting reelected. But she also uh, understands power, right? I mean, grew up in, in Baltimore, seen her uh, father there wield power and then going over uh, to California and working her way up there uh, as a woman, uh, which must have been very hard. So, I mean, it's been interesting to see her in this process as a woman wielding this power.